You know, now that we're down here, surrounded by darkness, and we're kind of stuck with this thing, uh, it kind of reminded me of my brother, <laughs> as strange as that may sound. Uh, my brother is a very honest, down-to-earth kind of guy. Uh, I learned a lot from him, and even to this day, he surprises me and has something new to teach me. Uh, I always thought of him as being very wise for his age. Uh, he's not old by any means, but once you get to you know, deeper subjects, he would make you think otherwise. So it wasn't until recently that he shared with me a more special kind of insight. He told me of things he saw that I just could not believe. He saw things that went beyond, far beyond what any of us with our biases and assumptions can even begin to comprehend. His words echoed into some strange, parallel world, and it almost made me panic. The more he shared, the more my blood thickened. I could feel eyes floating all around me, blinking in and out of existence, as if the fabric of what was real to me began to tear. In a single moment of absolute clarity and enlightenment, I realized that what he was sharing with me was not just experiences from his life or simple things he had seen. Try as I might, I could not remember my brother's face. Who was this man? Then it finally dawned on me. In my room, at three in the morning, half asleep and half awake, you will find that you suffer. That man was not my brother. That was someone else I could not recognize. I had learned things. Remembered things that were dormant deep within my psyche. Of creatures and beings far beyond our reach. Performing eldritch songs and rituals in places covered in starlight. It wasn't until today that I finally realized it. I don't have a brother. I never did. Who was talking to me? Welcome back everyone. This is the rotting brain of a hamster here with another Bloodborne PvP video. But I guess I should start calling this what it is. This is another edition of the Hunting Grounds series. Bad habit, I guess. I just say Bloodborne PvP and that's it. So in this video, we're actually gonna stay on topic. We're actually gonna talk about Bloodborne and the PvP. Uh, and yes, there are still things that I want to talk about when it comes to the PvP in this game, believe it or not. Um, so, to start off, what you're watching right now is going to be a 10-minute invasion. You know, those long invasions that you can get in Dark Souls 3? Uh, that's pretty much what this is. And pretty much for the same reason as well. In Dark Souls 3, it's going to be because, you know, the host is going to keep summoning people and you're going to just drag out the fight. And you're going to keep fighting them. And that, you know, takes a long time. So in, in this invasion, it's going to be pretty much for that reason. Not the entirety of the reason, but, you know, I'll, I'll get into that. Uh, this was, uh, basically, <laughs> one of my first quote-unquote gank spanks, if you really want to call it that. I wouldn't call it that. I just, I, at this point, I was just fighting. Um... And I don't know if many of you have noticed or if any of you have cared enough to, to even notice. But this was clearly, clearly one of my first times uh, playing Bloodborne PvP in this situation. In like a 2v1 setting or a gank setting. Uh, this is a very old clip. Alright? This is when I was first starting to get into the PvP and Bloodborne. So, this this invasion here that you're watching, it's part of, of a very important piece of history in my life. I'm kidding, I'm not gonna be that dramatic. 
but it is important uh this this was one of my i think this was like my first time actually having like a 2v1 or 3v1 and you can see there that i i still you know uh, barely knowing how to play i still taunted because i knew that i could get away with it because they weren't doing astronomical amounts of damage uh to me in a single hit so i i did that if you really think about it, my playstyle is sort of like Devil May Cry inspired because in those games you can taunt after landing a combo and you get rewarded for it. And, you know, I sort of do that. I, I act like a cocky asshole in the middle of a fight without really knowing if I'm going to make it out alive. <laughs> like, I, I, I act all tough and I do the gestures and all that, but, like, I'm over here holding my controller and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fucking live through this shit um but i mean this was one of my first times playing and i was already interested in bloodborne pvp but this is what solidified my interest you know it was at this point uh, having this experience that i said i want to dig deeper into this like this is really good it feels really good to play this is so different from dark souls and i fucking love it and from there, I, well, I mean, I'm here, you know, still making Bloodborne videos in 2018 when no one else really cares about Bloodborne PvP. Uh, but aside from all the things, you know, aside from getting me interested in Bloodborne PvP even more, aside from that, this was one of the first moments that really made me form my own opinion about the PvP. Now, outside influences and opinions were already on my mind, but I did not reach a conclusion because of them. And what I mean by that is that at the time, uh, there were a lot of Dark Souls YouTubers and streamers that had uh, pretty strong opinions about uh, Bloodborne PvP. Some of them just flat out disliked it uh, for various reasons. Not everyone disliked it for the same reasons. Uh, a lot of people hated the blood gem system and the fact that it made everyone turn into a, a, a fucking one-shot or two-shot machine, regardless of your HP. And other people hated the gun spam. Other people hated the blood vials. Uh, and other people hated all of those combined. Uh, so yeah, there were a lot of uh, big-name YouTubers, Dark Souls uh, uh, players, and, and stuff like that. Uh, you probably know all of them, you know. I, I used to watch a lot of them. Not so much anymore, because most of them are, like, regular streamers now and whatever. Uh, but anyway, I did not reach my own conclusion on Bloodborne PvP because of them. You know, I didn't listen to their opinion and, and, and said to myself, Oh, so that's all that that is. Okay, it's just shitty one and two shots. I don't want to play that. A lot of people actually did that. You know, that monkey see, monkey do mentality on the internet. And I'm not saying that YouTubers are responsible for that. I'm just saying that that's how a lot of people work now. That's how opinions and information spread now, you know, because of the internet and YouTube. It's a platform where you can share your opinion. And a lot of people are going to treat uh, uh, opinions like fact just because they like that particular uploader or streamer or content creator, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, uh, I reached my own conclusion. And this long invasion is one of the reasons as to why uh, I absolutely loved this experience. I don't have to tell you, again, like, I don't know if any of you care enough, but uh, this is clearly one of my first times because I am just playing really sloppy. I am playing so bad. So bad. I mean, aside from taunting like I am now, <laughs> like, <laughs> I always find some time to, to taunt them. Uh, you know, it's infuriating for me to watch all of this now. Like, I was making this video and putting everything together, and I, and I was watching it. And I was just so pissed off. I'm like, why? You're not doing R2s. You know, I, I'm, I'm not doing R2s. I'm just doing a lot of gun spam. Uh, and I'm playing more scared in general. Not good. Just not good overall. Uh, a lot of these guys would have eaten, like, a fully charged R2. But, you know, whatever. Um, I'm not going to tell you uh, whether 
I win or not, I'm going to keep the suspense, you know. Um, but the main topic of discussion today is going to be satisfaction for an invader. And I know that sounds kind of sexual, but I promise it's not. <laughs> Often you'll hear, you know, about these games, you know, the Souls games or the Soulsborne series, however you want to call it. You're going to hear that they reward the player with an intense satisfaction after overcoming hardships, right? Uh, such as beating a hard boss or getting through a tough level and so on, you know, stuff like that. For an invader, uh, there is nothing sweeter than to quote-unquote gank spank, but I find my satisfaction specifically to be killing the co-opers first, or the, the phantoms, however you want to call them. Killing them first, before finishing off the cowardly and overconfident host. We have all seen it before at this point, right? Uh, no matter which game you prefer, you know, Bloodborne, Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, even Demon Souls. Uh, you've probably seen it at this point in some videos or other, you know. You've probably seen it already a million times. A cocky host thinks that he's a tough guy because he has two butt buddies with him backing him up against a single invader, you know, the classic, the gank, you know. Uh, it's even worse in Dark Souls Remaster because it can be a straight-up 4v1, you know, but whatever. But in Bloodborne, like I've mentioned before, uh, you can play better than all of them and overcome the odds and not just not be scared and just not care about the fact that you're being outnumbered. You don't have to care. If you know that you're playing better than them, then you truly don't have to care. The only time you'll have to care is if they're both doing like a big, big amount of damage to you with a single hit. So in that situation, uh, you kind of have to care about that. But even then, like I've mentioned before, even then, in a gank situation, but they, they all have like really powerful weapons or gems or whatever, even then, simply playing better than all of them will actually reward you, uh, which is not always the case, sadly, you know. It's not always the case when it comes to the other games, you know, the Dark Souls series. Uh, in Bloodborne, uh, you are rewarded for just straight up playing better and not spamming your gun and all that and you can tell you know you can go back to to the other videos that i've posted which have more uh, recent clips of me playing and you'll see that i've changed i sometimes barely use my gun at all unless i know that someone is literally bashing their fucking forehead on the r1 button with a cleaver or something and then you'll kind of see me spam the gun to get that free parry but uh I have moved past that, you know, for a long time, I, I, I said to myself, you know, that, that's just not an effective way of playing. I actually started to use the blunderbuss as a stagger tool to create a, a brief window in which I can heal, you know, more strategical, strategical, what? Strategic, <laughs> more strategic uh, uh, stuff like that, you know, uh, and that's something that I didn't do back in the day, obviously. So, in that regard, you don't really have to be scared of being outnumbered. And uh, it's almost an intense catharsis after killing a piece of shit host. It's like seeing that bratty kid get what he deserves, you know? You often see, like, a bratty kid in movies and whatever, and he gets, like, a barrel of diarrhea dumped on him and you know he's a really shitty kid and he's like oh man i got diarrhea on my head and you're like haha you shit kid what do you deserve you piece of shit i don't know you should direct you know really strong words like that at a child but you know what i mean uh and this is i think a main reason as to why dedicated invaders exist in these games uh, because they all want to abuse children. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, it's because not all of them... Uh, uh, not all of them do it for that same reason. That's why I bring it up. You know, that's one of the main reasons for a lot of people. Uh, it's certainly one of the main reasons for me. But it's not the entirety of it. I just really enjoy Bloodborne's gameplay and mechanics. 
So it just adds a plus on top of another plus, and it just makes the experience that much better for me. Uh, but a lot of people, uh, they don't do it for that reason. Uh, you know, a lot of them are uh, uh, streamers, and you know, I'm talking about not just Bloodborne. You know, just invading in general in any of these games. Uh, a lot of them are like streamers and and YouTubers and, you know, they're looking for content. Uh, others in the same area just want to make like trolling or gimmick videos, you know. Others do it to get views on their streams and, you know, so on. So everyone, you know, not everyone feels that satisfaction or experiences that euphoric feeling of just fucking up a host and his buddies, you know, putting them to shame because, uh, you know, I don't want to get too deep into it. I don't want to pretend like I'm some psychology major or whatever, but um, it's often overlooked, you know, it, it kind of becomes obvious, you know, of course an invader being in a, in a 3v1 scenario is going to feel good if they overcome the odds, of course, that's obvious. But often we underestimate, you know, the, the, the good feels, you know, once you get that blood pumping, you know, you experience it once, it's like a drug, you're like, mm, I kind of want to get good because I want to have more of this, this rush, it's so good, I want to keep doing it. Um, so in that regard, I think it's, it's very interesting uh, to see people dedicate a lot of their characters to purely invading and I myself have always been an invader at heart um, like I have participated in a bunch of duels in every you know Souls game and even in Bloodborne a little bit but you know invading is just so unique because you never know what you're gonna get it's like a mixed bag you know it's like a, a randomizer of sorts it can be a lone host. It can be someone waiting for their buddy. Uh, are you even going to be responsible for the death of the host? A lot of these people die because of the stage, the PvE. And I'm talking about Bloodborne now. Try to invade people in the Nightmare of Menses, like at the very beginning. And, you know, these people are going to be getting killed by the spiders most of the time. I swear to God, I can make an entire video of just me guiding people through the beginning of the Nightmare Menses, getting to the spider room, and then they just instantly die. It's it's hilarious, or I should say it would be hilarious if it wasn't so sad. <laughs> because, I mean, you know, I get it. Not everyone is an expert PvE player. I get that. But, I mean, the amount of people that die to the fucking spiders. It's not like they're hiding. You can see a giant spider in the middle of the... F you know what? Whatever. I'm not gonna... Whatever. So, a lot of people die to the stage. And, and a lot of people die to other factors that are just not related to you invading at all. And it sort of detracts from that satisfaction. So, it becomes like an unhealthy thing where you're like, Ah, oh, fuck. I wanna, I wanna have that 3v1. I, I need it. I need that rush. It's like a drug. Mm, I need it. So anyway, that was the topic I wanted to cover. It was more of an observation, really. Uh, it's uh, something that has been present in all of these games, but I find that in Bloodborne, it's a little bit more exquisite just because you can outplay people so bad to the point where it becomes ridiculous, and it doesn't matter how much damage they do. It doesn't matter how many of them there are, and they'll fall to their death, and they're going to be embarrassed. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Join me in the next video where my Strength Arcane character is going to share with us the top 10 songs that the great ones enjoy. You won't believe, number one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.